this is going to be a solo episode of ComposerCast today, and recording it on my phone while I've got some free time. So this one is going to be about the masterclass I went to the other week, and it was all about the art of storytelling through music with the composer Gareth Coker. It was held at the BAFTA HQ in London, which was very cool to go visit. And Gareth Coker is the composer for the critically acclaimed game Ori and the Blind Forest. And in the talk, he discussed how we use music to reflect and drive the narrative of the game. So I'm going to talk about some notes and ideas I learned from the evening's talk. Recording the score. So the whole score for the game is 140 minutes long and they'd only booked 12 hours of recording time with the orchestra basically because of the budget. And it's pretty expensive hiring not just the musicians, but you have to hire the room, the conductor, and an audio engineer, and everyone, and it gets very expensive. So a good pace for an orchestra uh, to record is about 6 to 8 minutes of music per hour, and for this game they managed to record 11 and a half minutes of music in an hour. Like, that was the average length they recorded, which is crazy. Um, a tip Gareth gave is that the people in the orchestra will they'll pick up on your good vibes. So the nicer you are to them as a composer, then the nicer they'll be to you. And I don't know how nice you have to be to get them to record 11 minutes of music an hour, though. Like, that's just... You've got to be super nice. Bring them cakes. I don't know. Um, a great conductor goes a long way to making sure that the orchestra is happy as they'll, they'll engage the players basically while the composer figures out what to do next. If you're a composer, then getting hold of the game to play during the build process is ideal. The earlier you can get in, the better, as you'll really have a feel for the game and you'll kind of understand what the developer's vision actually is. Sometimes, you know, there might be a lot of NDAs, so it's basically impossible for the studio to let any copies out of their control. So if you can't get any early copies of the game to play, then maybe going to the studio to play it is the next best option. Failing that, you should get as much video of the game and progress as possible. Communicate with the developers and communicate some more. Communication is key, just so you can stay up to date and see the progress of the game and it should help you write better music. Next thing is implementing the music. So in Ori and the Blind Forest, Cutscenes were used to modulate keys and change the direction of the music. And this was deemed as the easiest and smoothest way to change the feel of the music, as trying to change keys adaptively would be incredibly difficult. Sometimes Gareth would ask the team to put in maybe like a 15 second cutscene just so he could do what he wanted to do with his score. And this is called horizontal music, so they didn't want to do any vertical music, you know, like interactivity just for the sake of putting it in. The sound effects in the game, apparently they were so punchy and so strong that the music itself didn't actually need to be too powerful. So the soundscape could easily have got overcrowded maybe, like too much going on with really big sound effects, really big music, it would just, to the person playing the game, it would sound a bit of a mess. So Gareth instead decided to use the sound effects in place of percussion instruments. So there was this nice balance in the game, and the sound effects were really helping the music, and the music was helping the sound effects. So I thought that was really cool. Music in VR. So Ori in the Blind Forest obviously isn't a VR game, but he didn't want to talk just about that. He wanted to cover all aspects of video game music. So in VR, sound effects are all around you, rather than just in stereo or even just 5.1, like the 360. So this means you have to think about the larger sound field and realize there are a lot more options of where they're going to come from. And when it comes to music, you might have to make it less busy to like compensate for that huge sound field. Then you have the question of will you mix your music in stereo like usual um, or will you put it in sort of normal 5.1 or will you use directional surround? Or we have it be situational and maybe like come from an area in the game world itself. So there's a lot to think about with music in VR. Um, for more information on that topic, you should check out composer Winifred Phillips and her thoughts about the role of music in VR. She wrote up, um, if you go to winifredphillips.wordpress.com, 
um, you'll find her blog post on there. The last thing Gareth talked about in his masterclass is pitching. So it's normal to pitch unless you're like a crazy superstar composer and it's normal to lose pitches. Don't let that get you down though because at the end of it you'll still have like an awesome piece of music that you love and it can probably be used for something else. So maybe you can add it to your library music collection or maybe use it for another pitch you got last minute. The main thing is not to scrimp on your pitch. So you should make it sound as authentic as possible to what the end result will be. So if you're trying to find people to actually pitch to, then you should head to things like PAX and GDC or Develop or EGX Rest, basically anywhere that game devs are going to be. So you should make yourself known and appear on the scene, but don't come across as needy and force yourself on people. Just like make really cool new friends, enjoy yourself and carry on making music and hopefully something will happen. So that was the last bit of the talk itself and now I'm just going to list the sort of tips and takeaways that I've got from the talk. So tip number one, actively listen to at least one hour of music a week. And that means like really listening, not just background music. So you should try and maybe pick out all of the instruments that are playing, figure out the time signature, understand what the underlying chords are doing, and then try and recreate the sound yourself. So you can basically train your ears and your skills as a composer. So try and write and create something every single day. Tip number two, the first piece of music in the game has to get the player in the zone. It's up to the composer to make sure the player doesn't want to turn off the music. So there's nothing worse than you've got this new game come out and you're really proud about the music. You see someone play it and the first thing they do is just turn the music audio slider all the way down. Or just like, yeah, just turn it off completely. Like you want, your music should be adding to the game, not annoying people. Tip number three, delegate your work. So you should delegate the work if you can and don't try and do everything yourself. Um, Gareth said basically it's just your ego getting in the way of practicality I thought that was a really good one I know I struggle like I want to do everything myself trying to delegate and trying to give other people the responsibility yeah, it's basically it's just ego getting in the way I want control so delegate work if you can and the final tip developers should encourage artists to fail and if they do that they'll get a much better result in the end so thanks very much for listening to this latest episode it's another short one another solo one but i hope you got some value from it anyway i want to try and do some more interviews with composers like the one i did last time with jan and adam i thought that went really well i really enjoyed that so i'm gonna yeah hopefully try and get in touch with some more composers and chat to them about their amazing work if you want to get in touch with me then i'm on twitter at will helliwell one the number one because someone already has Will Helliwell and I can't seem to get it um, but then everywhere else just search for Will Helliwell you find my website email Facebook Instagram all that stuff send me suggestions for the show ask any questions chat about video game music and yeah hope you have a good bank holiday weekend <laughs>